Hello everyone, this is Ron from MyTech Legion and this is the Gigabyte GA990FXA-UD7 motherboard. It is their highest end line for the AM3 plus socket motherboards. Of course it supports the latest Phenom 2 processors as well as the first generation FX processors like the FX8150 as well as uh, with a BIOS update the latest second generation FX series processors which are the F380 8350 based on the pile driver core as you can see here there is a preview window and there are more information about the product in there but uh, it'll be better if we actually just start opening it and I'll outline the actual features on the motherboard itself rather than just reading it on the box and you can do that yourself you can just go over to Gigabyte's website to do that so, so what I'll do is unbox it right in front of you as you can see here that it does have that pull-out uh, box similar to the G1 series, their high-end uh, gaming brand of motherboards. Unlike the regular motherboard uh, packaging from Gigabyte, which has just the standard white uh, lift top cover. Here there's a preview window and uh, another cover. There's two compartments here, one is for the accessories and one for the motherboard itself. So let's put aside the motherboard unit. Let's explore what the accessories are inside this container in the bottom compartment. Everything is neatly organized in sub compartments and here you have a pair of SATA 6 ports, or rather SATA 6 cables for the SATA 6 ports. Of course uh, AMD 950 subbridge supports up to 6 SATA 3 6G ports so uh, I believe these are both SATA 6G or SATA 3 6G since uh, it doesn't make sense to provide an older uh, SATA 2 3G cable if all the ports in the motherboard are SATA 3 6Gs. Here you have the multilingual installation guidebook, the driver CD which also contains utilities you can uh, use. There's actually plenty of utilities from Gigabyte. You have the touch BIOS, you have the cloud OC, and you have the also comes with Norton Internet Security OEM edition as well as the Easy Tune uh, System Enhancement Utility and also of course more importantly the drivers that you need so you can have uh, your Gigabyte GA 990FX AUD7 up and running especially your Ethernet uh, connection. You have also your manual in here it's all English manual hence the multilingual installation guide is separate it's also these stickers see there uh, they do have the tendency to fly around since they're quite light and small. You have the Dolby Home Theater sticker here and a Gigabyte powered sticker. Of course, uh, some loose sheets here, which are, of course, addendum usually for the motherboard. You have the motherboard correction here uh, for what kind of uh, LAN, LAN chip is used. Also, a uh, this is an FCC declaration of conformity, just for legal reasons. And in this compartment, you get several SLI connectors as well as crossfire connectors for multi-GPU setups. The largest one here is obviously the four-way SLI connector since the GA990FXA UD7 is, uh, I believe it is the only truly four-way SLI capable 990FX based motherboard currently. Uh, there are other high-end motherboards but only uh, they can only do up to three-way SLI and you also get a three-way SLI cable and there's actually not cables, really. these are very, uh, these are just stiff card type SLI cables. And there's also crossfire, uh, one more SLI connector in here, actually for dual SLI. So dual SLI, triple SLI, and quad SLI connectors. As for crossfire, you have a pair of them here. You have crossfire connectors. And these should be sufficient for up to quad, S, uh, quad crossfire X uh, setup as well. And the last item here, the bottom compartment, is the IO shield, which is labeled and color coded. See here that uh, it is very detailed that uh, Gigabyte has included. Although the pad, uh, usually I'm, I'm surprised it didn't have a padding here in the back. Not really a huge deal, but just uh, just gotten used to it maybe in uh, other high end systems. But uh, thankfully, just having the, the IO plate labeled and organized color code like that is uh, easier for most users to do. And uh, let's put all these these uh, accessories aside. 
And let's take a look at the GA990 FXA UD7 motherboard itself. First we notice is that this motherboard is slightly wider than the standard ATX spec motherboard. I believe this is about uh, about an inch or uh, a little bit over an inch longer. Uh, the um, Gigabyte's website says it is EATX, although I believe it is slightly shorter than EATX. Of course, it's the high end uh, high end motherboard from Gigabyte, so they have uh, extra features in there designed for overclockers and system enthusiasts. Also, I noted that uh, this one has four-way SLI support. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, and six PCIe X16 connectors. Uh, physically, they are X16 in sizes, although they're not all X16 ele electrically. As you can see, this one is X16 electrically, as well as this one. So if you're going to run uh, two-way SLI, I would suggest connecting it to these two, uh, easily indicated by the locks they have there. They're a lot different compared to these uh, push down button locks on these uh, metal three PCIe, which are actually, this is 4X, this is 8X, and this is 4X once again, and another 8X at the bottom. And uh, there's one in the middle is actually a PCI, uh, legacy PCI connector. It doesn't have the open end like in other PCI connectors. And uh, also, uh, as you can see here, you have the new heatsink design. It's very elegant looking. Uh, it's a lot of departure from the uh, candy blue and white color theme we've come to expect from Gigabyte as uh, previous designs. Of course, this new one is a lot sleeker. I, from the uh, photos, I thought this was actually gold trim, but it's actually copper, so it matches the ultra durable design. You have the gray, black, and uh, copper kind of outlines. And as you can see, these is not just uh, the heating design is not just for aesthetic. They're actually very functional. As you can see, these there are grooves in there. Uh, the air, of course, passes through those, and uh, as you can see, it is angled uh, facing this way, so that it draws air this way instead of going uh, backwards and down into that area. Similarly, here at the bottom, uh, there's a little bit. Uh, the edges are tapered down here for the bottom so that uh, air just slides down and also cools the heat the uh, chipsets underneath and there also a single uh, there's a centered uh, heat pipe that connects both of those the north bridge the VRM and the chipsets at the bottom so let's start to look at the features closely and let's do that one by one I move the camera closer starting with the uh, VRM area top ring closer all the way around so we can take a closer look all right, you're starting here at the upper um, left-hand area. See there is the 8-pin CPU power connector, and there's a recess there uh, where the heatsink ends, so there's a little bit more room in there for your hand to maneuver and attach those cables. It actually attaches to the other, the lock is on the other side, so you shouldn't have a problem. As you can see here, my fingers, uh, how my fingers fit in that area. And here in the VRM area, interesting design, um, you have the 8 plus 2 v, uh, phase VRM there, then the north bridge is directly underneath. Of course, also you have this new the AM3 plus socket with these new uh, the the AMD locks with open inside. Uh, these were introduced, I believe, with the FM1 socket first, uh, but uh, they have the similar uh, mounting holes anyway. So you can use FM1 and FM2 and AM3 and AM3 plus uh, heat sinks interchangeably. Uh, between various uh, various heat sinks and also here you have the uh, let me point out the difference since this is the rev uh, revision 1.1 compared to the original revision 1.0 other than here on the left hand corner there is a print that says rev 1.1 also you will notice the area right here is different uh, these two components right here they're not present in the uh, in the original Rev 1.0 and there's no uh, load line calibration in the BIOS so that is one feature to look at since uh, when when this is in the box you can't see the Rev 1.1 there but when you open the box uh, from the store you can just take it out and you can see that if there these two are missing there that means it is the older 1.0 variant and uh, 
So here you have also the CPU fan connector right at the top edge. It's a single CPU fan connector as well as uh, dual channel DDR3 dim slots. See that they're all, uh, they're not color coded, alternating. Similarly on other, uh, similarly found on other motherboards, they're just single. Uh, single color dim slots, all black. But uh, if you're you're going to use dual channel, uh, you want to use you want to put it here on the second and fourth slot first. And if you're gonna pop, of course you're gonna pop all four, it has no problem. But uh, when you can do that, you, you pair them alternately. And uh, here at the bottom, rather on the right side of the motherboard, you have of course the another a three uh, another fan header. This one is a three pin fan labeled power fan. And also you have a 24 pin power connector. There's also this onboard power reset and clear CMOS buttons. And these actually light up when it is powered on. They light up a uh, kind of a light blue LED. And the clear CMOS of course is covered so you don't accidentally press it. If you are replacing the CPU, you uh, recommend to clear CMOS. Of course, you have to set the bias to default before you do that. And uh, from my experience, uh, moving from, an, uh, I would say, moving from a, a Phenom 2 to an FX processor should definitely clear the CMOS on a Gigabyte motherboard. Uh, but uh, usually, if you, if you're moving from FX to a, to a 1090 or a, under Phenom 2, I didn't have that. You don't need to clear the CMOS; it will it will boot automatically. And you can just uh, reset it on the BIOS. At least from my experience, maybe it depends on the BIOS version. And this is a unique feature here. You can see that it has a SATA um, power connector. Of course, this is a PEG connector or PCIe graphics connector, since there are. A multiple uh, graphic card supports in here. You can run up to four SLI. The PEG connector, PCIe graphics connector, allows the uh, Gigabyte GA990 FXA UD7 to draw a lot more power for overclocking the GPU. So that is important if you are the type of user that will want to overclock GPUs. Also, uh, here you have the SATA connectors, six of which, of course, are powered by the SB950 SAT bridge that is right underneath here. Also underneath there, you won't see it until I, unless I remove that heatsink. Uh, powering these two SATA 36G ports is a uh, Marvell 91 S, uh, rather um, 9172 uh, chip. Also, uh, we'll look at the, the back later. There's also another Marvell chip in there that powers the eSATA port. And also, you have your Port 80 debugger. These also light up and they display postcodes when you're booting uh, to show what the errors are, if any. For example, your memory will tell you a, <clears throat> a specific code that you can find in the BIOS for that if the problem is in your memory or a specific component when, whenever you're overclocking or just uh, booting your system in a standard way. Also, you can see that there's two BIOSes there. Of course, the Gigabyte supports has uh, dual BIOS support, so just in case uh, one gets corrupted, uh, you have a backup BIOS, especially when you're overclocking a lot, um, that tends to happen. It's also the CMOS battery, a four pin system fan, and time to switch it downward here. You have um, the front panel connectors. I love uh, the Gigabyte front panel connectors the most because not only do they have a label, they're color coded as well, and the polarity is marked in there. So I don't need to. Uh, I can just just keep on uh, keep on plugging in there without uh, worrying about which will, will go. We don't have to check the manual manual because I keep on you know. I keep on forgetting sometimes, especially since I don't tend to plug in plug in the front panel like there. Uh, I just uh, run it from a uh, desktop table, and you also have a trusted platform module in there, and the front panel USB connector. And this front panel, uh, of course, the uh, 990FX chipset from uh, AMD does not have native USB 3.0 support yet. They do, it does have native SATA 3.6G support, but it doesn't have native USB 3.0 support. So Gigabyte has used this Edron Tech EJ168A chip for running that USB 3.0 power. Also here, I um, forgot to show you this one. This one is a jumper in here. It says it's labeled as clear CMOS right now. It's open, so it's normal. 
but you can if you short that maybe you can just put a, uh, a screw in there or if you have a, a tiny uh, jumper so you can jump that that will clear the CMOS as well if you don't want to use the button there for some reason and let's move down further you have your USB uh, 2.0 headers here one two and three notice that one is red this is of course the on off charge port for a more, much more efficient charging of external devices in the also. Here you have another system fan header. This one is three pin. And here at the bottom is an, uh, this is a Firewire header. This is a Firewire 1394 header. This is actually, I believe this is from the VIA chip in here, which is the VIA VT6308P chip. There's also a Firewire header here in the rear. The, rear I.O. but I'll to show you that later and uh, put this cover back here we are now with the front panel audio header of course uh, where um, I've gotten used to the old gigabyte motherboard where the front panel header was right near the uh, rear audio outputs but here is actually it is actually right here at the bottom and let's find out what uh, chip it has it says here it is 108 db single noise ratio so this is most likely an alc 889 uh, <clears throat> this is 8899 codec and here you also have uh, another one notice that still uses the ati logo in here of course ati hasn't been used in a while uh, here is actually just uh, AMD maybe we should update their cell screen and uh, also here at the rear pull that so you can see you have your audio connectors also and more audio connectors here but of course this is the SPDIF for the coaxial and the digital and uh, so you can see the USB 3.0 headers here uh, this is confusing because these are labeled blue uh, these are colored blue as well but these are not USB 3.0 these are actually eSATA ports and one of them is actually a combination eSATA port and a USB port and these are powered by the Marvel chip it's actually a Marvel chip here if you look closely right there again Marvel 9172 and the USB 3.0 is powered by a Trontech EG EJ 16.8a similarly found on the uh, onboard header right at the bottom and you also have a pair of USB 2.0 ports here, a pair of USB 2.0s here, a one USB 2.0 port here, and one and a, another pair here and there for a total of seven in the back, as well as a legacy PS2 port for legacy keyboard or mouse users. Again, as mentioned, the FireWire port from the VIA VT6308P chip, and um, forgot to mention the Realtek LAN port. This is the 811. One RTL 8111E was a gigabit LAN port for fast transfer rates. Well, I'm surprised that they didn't put dual LAN on the high end uh, UD7 platform they have here for the 990FX at UD5. But that's good enough as long as uh, there is one. And uh, that pretty much covers the out overview of the Gigabyte GA990FXA UD7. And the best thing to do now, of course, is put in our new processor. And actually, I'm going to use a an AMD FX8350 processor, which is their latest second generation FX processor based on the PAL driver core, uh, codenamed Vishera. And we should see how well it performs and how well it overclocks on this updated GA990FXA UD7 Revision 1.1 motherboard. And thanks for watching. And you can read the rest of the review at hightechlegion.com. Leave questions or comments below. And see you next time.